Hello, this is Max Rack. I just want to talk to you about um, Revit, a tool that I'm actually developing for Revit. Um, uh, one of the issues that I have is it's got some fantastic things that it's doing and it's basically been modeling and all of that. But the day-to-day -day things I find a bit of a struggle. So one of the examples that I'm going to use here is I'm just going to go do a region. So R4 sets me into, sorry, brings me into the region. Uh, I then want to go and do a region over here. So um, it's preset onto... Oh, cancel. Let's just see if we can do this again. Uh, brings me into the region. It presets onto line. So I then click four points, one, two, three, four, five to close. And I've got to come back up here and do. And I find going into the ribbon very, very distracting when I'm designing and, and working on things. I, I find it, it sort of breaks my concentration as I'm uh, focused on a particular detail or a particular item where I'm working. So the other way that I can do that is that I, if I do the R4 there is that I can come up to the ribbon again, click rectangle, then come down, click a couple of points through there, which is a lot quicker, then come back up and tick. So when I suddenly thought, well, um, I ended up developing a tool um, that allows you to do this instead. I just type G spacebar, sets you into there. All I need to do is click two points and it does the tick at the end. So I, I just uh, type the keyboard shortcut and then click on a couple of points. It does the rectangular one for me. A lot easier, a lot less mental strain of, oh, I've got to hover around and what have I got to do and I'm in the wrong thing. And a lot of times I'll be in the line command going into doing the region, then cancelling out and have to redo it so that I set the, the, the right one. So this is the sort of thing that I find quite annoying. So the tool I'm actually developing is called uh, Power Key for Revit. There's a 30-day free trial. Uh, I would encourage people to use that if they find that they um, have got some suggestions to make. I'm really wanting some, some suggestions. They can email me with those suggestions. I will give them another 30 days on their license. And, and then if I incorporate those things, uh, I will email them with a third um, license um, and also the update if I've actually incorporated it at that point in time. There is an annual license through there. There's um, an Udemy course if you actually want to learn how to build these things yourself. And there's also a return on investment calculator, which I'll just go through towards the end. So jumping back into that, oh, sorry, if we come into here, so inside uh, the other one, uh, power keys for Revit, keys and usage, each one will actually have a key uh, coming through here, and it explains what it does, and there's usually a small video that will actually do that. I've only got a couple of the symbols on here, and I've got a few more that I've actually added to that list at the moment. The other place you can go is to type HLP, and it comes through with a list of the keyboard shortcuts on there, or if you go to the right hand, click on here, you can edit the settings which we'll be doing, or there's a help for the power key for Revit there, which um, uh, is a thing. And if you type F2, it'll take you to the website of where we saw before. So the first one that I actually want to demonstrate through there is if we just type NN for a note. So this one just drags up and pops up a note. So straight away, I can grab a note and I can just click a point and uh, it'll write that note. Now you notice that it's got that arrow on the end there. Now what I can actually do here is if I prefer to um, edit settings through here, I can actually um, set the arrow so that it's one segment, two segments or three segments. So let's just save that as two segments there, save. And so this is my settings folder through here. Now if I just type NN come through a different one and actually have my pipe diameter apply I can actually just go bump, bump, two settings, and the pipe comes through there. These ones here I preset so that I can actually just add in uh, a dimension, so 100 millimeters one. It could be another, but I've got another method of doing those that I'll talk about briefly later on. So um, I can actually have pre-done notes. Now you're suddenly thinking, well, that's all right, but where are your notes? So what you can actually do is this is just, um, I'm just going to dock this one through there, is this is Notepad++. Now I'm using this for a, a, a couple of reasons. One reason is inside the plugins you can do a spell check. So therefore I can actually have terms like dwangs and actually uh, add dwangs to the dictionary so that it will disappear in a second. And so I can actually have a whole lot of terms that are technical terms that I'd use and they will actually be incorporated into that. Another thing which I can do is that I can change the encoding on the file from UTF-8 to UTF-8 bomb. Now if you're when you do a text file normally 
it will be set as UTF-8. But then when you actually try and import that in, so if I just go in and into here and just go, I think it takes might be that one here. This one here uh, is set at UTF-8. So if I just come into here and put that note into there, you see the symbols don't come through correctly. Some do, some don't. You see the percent, uh, the the degree symbol comes through, but not the percent, uh, the, the diameter symbol. So um, if you save the whole thing, say if I just go N N there again, and I go into text copy, this one has saved it. So all of the things come in quite nicely. Boom, and the, and and we've actually got the symbols coming in. So this will be handy if you've got a whole load of notes uh, that you're repeating all the time. And this specifically was another one. I do some building services stuff. I do some structural stuff where there's a lot of repetition. You're doing a six millet fillet weld on the bottom of all the things. You're doing pipe diameter this, whether it's condensate minimum and stuff like that. Some of those drive me cracked. Now, so I've got another one which just has PP. So the pipe diameter we're going to say is 32 uh, millimeter and it's going to be cold water supply and, uh, uh, and now if you see on these boxes if it's got a little blue surround that means you can use an enter key so that I can actually just do that so this is one of the things that I used to do all the time I take a note and then I'd copy the note I bring it down and I line it down further. Then I go and edit the note um, to, to modify it to, to whatever. So this one might be condensate. Well, it's condensate, so it isn't. But in this one, if I got the PP one through here, I can just type the note exactly what I want through here. Now, on this list coming through here, you'll see the different terminologies. Now, you might have an office standard one. So if I come back through into my note file through here, we can actually say, no, I actually want this to be called hot water supply. This is how we write it as the office standard. We may end up having the abbreviations, like we might have chilled water cert supply, or we might actually have two lots. We might actually have long ones where we can put them on drawings, or we might have short ones as well. So that I can actually have a long list that has both of those situations coming through. This should just carry on scrolling down. And if not, you'll end up with a scroll bar at the, at the end. So I can save that now. So I've now changed that one. So I've got to close out of that one. So if I just go PP, you'll find now that it's actually changed as to what uh, it was before. So it'll update straight away for you. So it's easy to do. So we're, we're just going to go. Now, another thing that I can do on here is that I can go into uh, back into my uh, settings as well. And I can change my units. Now, I've got my units here uh, as uh, inches. So that's set there, that units when I just sort of a silly name. So if I just go PP into there and just type 34, oh, sorry, it'll be two inches, we'll say. And we'll say it's cold water supply. And we'll say we don't want to fall on here. And we just go enter and we pick two, uh, pick, pick. Oh, sorry, I didn't do that right. Uh, I was a bit cad over enthusiastic there and uh, do it we drag that down there so it's now got the inches and it's got the cold water supply um, through there so um, it means that you can end up with uh, your, your office standard looking a lot more consistent because of the fact that all your annotation is starting to look the same. So if you want to have it long or if you want to have it short. And then there's the ones like uh, with that particular one through there. Um, well, we do a duck one. So this one here is LP for the duck one. Uh, this one has a whole lot of ones that come through. So I've got smelly air supply and then I've got 200 times 300. Now, at the moment, I've got a slight bug on this. So if I just take, because that's highlighted in blue, I can just hit the enter key, bang, bang, bang. And I'm suddenly saying I'm bored with two segment lines. I'm actually going to go back to um, three segment lines. So I'm just going to go into there and go three and save my settings file through there. And now when I actually just go T space bar, and come in with something through there. I've now got a curved arrow through there. Now, what I want to do in the curved arrow is to write. Now, I can, if I want to get my symbols, I can right hand click, I can go into symbols, and I can come in and I can go diameter sign, and then I can say 32 millimeter uh, pipe uh, cold water supply. Uh, uh, with ins, with ins, and then just go. Uh, that one's not quite right, but if I click on there, it'll now do it. So what I can actually do there as well uh, is I can type DIA spacebar, 
and it will do that symbol straight away. So as I'm writing, I don't have to come out, go into my context menu by right hand click and come into the set symbols and choosing those. The other one is, is that if I'm doing uh, imperial stuff, I'll say one and I'll go one slash two space. Oh, what happened there? One. One slash two space, and it do the half inches for me. Uh, uh, half inch uh, pipe uh, drain to uh, floor waste, and just go uh, okay and click out of that. So I can I, I I I can end up with a lot more tidy by using a whole lot of um, uh, uh, fractions in the thing so if we just go into hlp and go through there you'll see a lot of those so i've got a lot of fractions in there for people who are still working in imperial and they're handy to get now i've actually kept you've got to type in one uh, forward slash two and the reason i'm doing that because if you type something like uh uh, one two it could be at the end of a row and it might suddenly start putting the symbol in where you actually wanted to write an actual number so i've got it in thirds i've got it in eighth and i've got it in quarters and i've got it in half so that should do enough for you another one that we've got through there is that we can put um deg c oops with that uh and we can put uh temp uh 45 deg c spacebar and it gives you the degree symbol, or you can say uh, deg F, and it put the uh, Fahrenheit symbol into it. So, so that's something that um, uh, from from symbols that we're adding. Another one that I, I actually did, I've, I've had this a couple of times where I just wanted an arrow to point at things. And then you're going in and you're coming into your um, annotate and you're looking in here and you're trying to find a symbol to use or something, or you go and get an, an arrow and you fudge it and, and you do it. Is that I've actually just got a, if I just go T space bar into there, uh, and we'll have the arrow onto there, and then I go arrow right, A-R-T, space, and then I've got an arrow. Now, the first thing that I need to do is if I select that there, uh, and I've highlighted it, I go A2, uh, it removes my arrow. So I can actually go A1 and put an arrow on my left. A2 removes the last arrow. A3 puts an arrow on the other side. Uh, so if I just A2 that one again, Sorry, I think I've got to come off and come on A2 to do that one again. Now, what I can do on here is that I can actually have that as something like a, a, a thing that sometimes I just want, you know, like a, a, to, to highlight that, you know, this is where the entrance door is or something like that or, or the stairs or something handy that, you, you, you know, just on, on the thing. So this is some stuff that I'm just doing and it's really for preliminary design. Like one of the things I can do on this is go OG, I can select something and it will then take me uh, uh, to enter that object through there, I can change that object style to solid, and I can go. Let's just make it really loud and go OK, and then OK. I've got an arrow through there, so I'm using a symbol to do something uh, quite quickly uh, to, to highlight something. Again, with that OG one, I can actually type OG. I can select a, a, an object and then select all objects of the same type in the view. We can come down. Oh, sorry, and uh, go. Um, solid fill. I've only taken it this part because I might want to do the lines or I might want to do some other object of it. So we're going to do a nice pink for those chairs and go OK <coughs> and OK into there. And then we've got that. So that I find this, uh, uh, we, we're just doing preliminary design or developed design. I just want to highlight some things to the client to describe and, and have some notes. So I just want to make them a bit bolder. Or I've moved some stairs around or there's a little bit of a hint or something. You can you can make them more prominent quite quickly without too much fiddling around with going into, you know, the, the, the Revit is a bit like AutoCAD. It has so many things for so many people that suddenly you find it really hard to look at. You know, now uh, again, I generally do services. Um, uh, that's where I started off, and then I went into architecture. But then I did a, some structural stuff as well. And like structural framing, and this is where I want a little bit of feedback as well. So I might actually have, uh, uh, so we just go NN for there. We go into a structural note there, which I've got hardly any at all. But I just uh, go and, and do an apply. I'm on curvy line at this point. So we just hit that through there. And... Uh, uh, 10 millimeter base plate, yeah. And a lot of the times with the base plates, they're always told to, to kind of like uh, to column 
with six millimeter fillet. So that one there might actually, I want to set a fillet symbol instead. So I can actually just put an ang and it gives me uh, a, a symbol. So that's maybe not the right symbol. I'm not really bothered. I haven't done it for a while. But I can actually start putting symbols into here dead quick into the notes. And also I can actually have those notes pre-built and just chuck them in uh, as I go very, very quickly. And also like um, uh, some of the pre-built ones I've got, I've got those ones here. The PP one, what this does as well is that it shows you the note at the top so that you can see which bits you need to add and it's got them although uh, this is still if we just cancel out of here and just go into the hlp you'll see some of these are in beta testing mode because i'm still i've got to build these uh, GUIs from scratch and, and and getting them right is is sort of uh thing so i'm trying a few things out i've got an architectural one which is just 66 through here so it's a whole lot of different things so what's my internal lining so i just say jib uh, 12 millimeters uh, uh far line we'll say and it's paint finish uh, but, and, and then the framing size is something like 100 times 50 and that's all I want to do so I, so I don't want to say anything about the insulation I don't want to say anything about exterior cladding I don't want to say if there's a rigid air barrier board and if there's a ventilated cavity because it's okay I can just hit enter and go click click and there's my note um, through there uh, so uh, I'm trying to see if I can do things to actually speed up some of the efficiencies but I'm also trying to do them so that they can either be imperial or metric and, and that's one of my little challenges at the moment that I've got through there but it's quick I can actually start writing things because this is something that I find personally and something which has driven me to do a lot of this stuff with notes especially with that I thought I said add to library um, uh, uh, oh, it's, no, no, no. so you see the Spain one it, it, it should be Spain through there so if I just control save that window through there go into NN through here I can go into the new note through there the rain in Spain apply bang bang notes there and it's properly spelled so this is something I was just highlighting before as I'm getting older I find I miss typing but I always used to miss type because I tend to think faster than I type and so having pre-built notes or being able to quickly do a note, and I find writing in a text um, editor far easier than writing inside Revit. Then I'm going to move the mouse along to somewhere to do something through here, uh, whereas I can actually just use a tab. Oh, sorry. Um, uh, what is it? So something I can't remember. There's one that you can actually just jump between things. But I do find the text editor easier to use and for editing, and then just bang it in. Uh, it, 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 it's it's so much easier to use. So I'm trying to use symbols. I'm trying to do things where I'm chaining things together. And this one here for the OG where I'm doing stuff there, you know, so the OG one, I've done it once. Um, oh, sorry, am I, I've got to make sure I'm in there. I just cancel out of there and just escape. Uh, if you're in the wrong program, it won't work. So one of the things in here, let's just type OG and then I select something and then it goes there and then i'm just going to go reset and it just resets there if i come into here and type og nothing happens it's just og so these ones are the keyboard uh programs are all revit specific so if i actually type arrow right it just is out uh, so it isn't going to do anything through there. So um uh, this is something that speeds up uh, a, a lot of the things that I do is that I can keep in the area of where I'm working. Now I can also extend this through to schedules. So the, the schedules I find a bit of a blooming weird thing. Now I would always recommend uh, that you go and get yourself a uh, plugin that will import and export from uh, Excel and there's a few uh, uh, free plugins that are around, they've been around for a while and do all your work for schedules inside of uh, Excel because it's a lot quicker and you're not doing it cell by cell. But I always find at the end of a project that I've actually got it's tiny little tweaks and by the time you've actually done the export, fiddled in Excel and brought it back in again for those little things, you might as well have done them inside here. Now a couple of tricks inside here. For First of all, I can use that same one which is SN and I can get a note, bring it in, I can select something there, go apply. I can then choose which cell I put it in. And I click on a cell there. Now, if I try doing it here, look what actually happens. SN space. 
it does starts trying to do this next trigger an n space but it, it, it's sort of taking the first letter as a uh, text that you want but if you actually just go space first and then type sn then the pop-up box actually works through there and you can actually just grab one so we grab a big one and just go okay and i don't have to put it in that cell i can put it in any cell i want the other thing that i've got in there is symbols so i can actually just go into there and type tik and i can put a tick into there and i can just put an rx into there uh, for a cross um, uh, it's actually r r for a red cross because I, it's an actual red cross, but it only shows as black inside Revit. Um, so that's quite a handy thing to, to, to do. And again, if you've got specific notes inside um, uh, uh, here, so you actually just want to put a box into there, you can actually just type the T-I-K, and it'll put a tick, or a, an R-X, and it'll put the cross into there as well. So sometimes uh, you can go through at, uh, at a revision stage and, and say certain things have been done and, and just have, put those in there maybe to actually come confirm that they're, they're, they're good. <laughs> just little ones that I thought were quite fun anyway. Um, so uh, it's quickly putting the, the, the symbols through there. Now another one that I end up with a bit of an issue with is um, I would use uh, room objects quite a lot um, because all of the objects are in the room. You can then associate them with the room. So when you go to a database or you're ripping stuff out of Revit to go and put into a database or into an asset schedule or, or, or um, an asset thing, or I would be firing stuff out to a 3D PDF and actually accessing stuff. So that can be transported around and given around. And a lot of data is sitting in there that they can actually access via Excel from exporting from the 3D PDF. Now to do that, I'll constantly switch in on and switch in off rooms. Now if I just go into uh, visibility graphics, this is the one that I do and then I'll type R for room and then I'll scroll down and rooms sort of halfway in there and then I click rooms and then I go interior fill reference and I'd have to be aiming for those. And me being an old codger, I find it a little bit difficult to do. Whereas I can actually type RR2 hands up here and it's doing it all automated itself luxury don't have to do it so all i have to do is remember rr2 i've got another one rr1 which does a room separator lines um and uh, uh this one turns it on and off because what i find sometimes is that uh my visibility uh my view templates i haven't I, i've left some of these out and i come to print a set of drawings and i see the room uh, separators in there so I've got to go in and just tweak them so now I've got that little thing that I just go and do that now these are in the sort of a, a beta stage at the moment because uh, uh, it's got a couple of things I need to try. I want to make them a little bit more generic so that you can actually add your own ones through using things like the uh, in here is what I'm trying to do is to make it adaptive so that you can actually put your own notes in uh, to, so so whatever your office standard in and you may have 15 or 20 different pipes types that you actually use through there although generally you put the last ones the last one is the one that pops up on on the on on the descriptor um, it's just the way that it iterates through now if you end up with another one this has actually got nine so if i come into here and uh uh and and i want uh another one through here let's just use this one here and i add another one and and this is called a very smelly very smelly um air supply uh, uh then I, i've actually got to put the number of lines up to 10 and just save that there. Now, in the future, I might actually change this into a GUI so it just pops up and you can actually just drop those things in rather than uh, coming in and editing this text file through here. So once I've done that one there, I can actually just go, I think that was the duck one, so that's LP. And if I come into here, uh, I've only got this smelly air supply. Why did, didn't that save? Save. And I'm going to go out of there. And then if I just go LP, no, it didn't do it. And you see how it's written once, twice. I've got to debug that. I thought I'd fix that. Huh. That's interesting. Anyway, um, uh, th th those are sort of ones that I'm working in in beta, really. I think the notes one through here is, is something that really 
powers through quite a lot. I find from the point of view of notes, I've got pre-set up notes. I can have this uh, here and I can be looking at a detail and I suddenly think I want to note about that and I can write it. I want to note about that. I want to note about that because I tend to draw and then I tend to kind of, uh, annotate afterwards. So I can just pull everything in very, very quickly. So we've got those room separators and things like that. So, okay, we've got something that, that happens through here. Now, the next thing that I want to do is, is say, well, are you more efficient or not? So if we come into here where we store this, so when you install this, it stores it in documents and inside one called PowerKeys for Revit. Inside here, there's a little file called Frequency. And what it does, every time you use that program, or sorry, you hit one of those keys, it will record it inside this one here. So therefore, you can see how many times that key is used. So what good is that? Well, here, on the um, uh, in the one here, there's actually a return on investment calculator for the keys. So what we can do in that uh, schedule is that we can say, how long does it take us to do it? So the example that I'm going to use is that region one. Now, when I was doing it, um, I timed myself. When I was doing it with the five points and then going up and clicking off, say so it was in the line thing, it took me about 16 and a half seconds to do it. When I did it, when I went up and actually clicked from uh, line to rectangle and then did it, it took me about 10 seconds. And when I did it with my shortcut key, which was just G spacebar, it took about eight and a half seconds. So therefore, if it was the quickest way, like you, maybe you're one of the best CAD, uh, sorry, one of the best BIM guys in the thing, so you would do it the fast way, but there would be people doing it the slower way, we're making one and a half uh, seconds saving on that one key. So how many times have you done that key? So unless you can actually see how many times, how frequently you've used it, we don't know how efficient you are. So let's just say that we say one and a half seconds. We can actually say how many times do we use it in a day? So let's just go and say uh, with the frequency. So that was um, G space there. So I've used it eight times today, but it's mainly in demo. But let's just put eight times a day. But you're not going to have it eight times. So let's just put it five times a day that you do a bit of region. So five times a day. And if you put your hourly rate into here, so this is what you've got. I've got a complete explanation video on all of this anyway. Uh, we come through here. So it, if you're doing it 10 times a day and uh, it's, it, it's taking you 10 seconds to do and you've done it five, it's costing you 69 cents. Because we've, we're uh, doing it, it's taking eight and a half seconds. It's only costing us 59 cents. So we've made making 10 uh, cents a day savings by using that one command five times. So in a week five times a day we've, we're saving 52 cents in a month four times a week uh, we're saving two dollars and in a year we're saving 25 dollars on one command that we're using with that frequently see so what i've done here is i've looked at four different commands and if we just go back into the these ones here and just go uh um uh hlp uh a lot of these here, they're going to take exactly the same. So, so using W space for wall instead of WA or things like that, it, it's going to take exactly the same time. So none of these. The region one will save you some time. The notes one will save you the time. The schedule one might take you some time. Moving the arrows around on your text box might save you some time and things like that. And some of these visibility graphics and other notes things can actually save you time. So when you look at some of your notes, and this is just an example, I actually haven't tested these out because I've got to think of the right size note that's fair for what you'd type as to what you'd actually cut and paste in, in a way but even with cutting and pasting it's still if you're doing it from another project once you're actually just grabbing it out of a file and you know exactly where those files are you don't actually have to open up the other project or anything like that and this is kind of saying well we're using this 16 times away well I do an awful lot of text any phase of a project I'm writing an awful lot of text in apart from the really preliminary when you're actually just doing the, the basic 3D modeling of the pretty building and stuff but a lot of times I'm actually setting up sheets at the same time of putting in information because somebody says oh tell us what's actually happening in there so when we actually look at that this is just at four commands so on one command in a year i'm saving 25 dollars now if there's five of us using those keys that's saving 125 dollars that's on one key 
which you're doing repetitiously, and that's assuming that they use it to the same frequency as you. So when we actually look at a couple of the text ones, and the detail night is the one where it pops up, that's the PP one, or, or the thing, it's, it's that instead of copying and pasting and then editing the note, you just write the note and just drag down and just pop it in the next time. And then the visibility graphics one, you know, maybe the first time 12, and maybe it's 9, and then you're doing a little bit of savings on there. When I've added up all of those onto an annual one, in, when you're doing it manually, it's 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 costing you three it's three thousand dollars. Well, if you actually divide that by your fifty, um, so we'll actually say this is equal to that divided by fifty. Um, so uh, that's sixty one hours that you're spending on that one. And then if you actually just divide that by um, fifty again. Uh, you're only spending 32 hours on it. So in, in the course of a year on those four commands, you're spending half, almost half your time. So you can actually see what cost savings you're doing. Now, when you actually put your rate, sorry, and another thing with the rate, so we've got an hourly rate. So that may be your, 40, your salary, 48 weeks, and then you divide that by however many hours in, 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 in the 48 weeks. And then you can divide it by second. So therefore, you can get your rate um, your your rate, how much uh, your, uh, your your second rate is. That sounds right. That's wrong, doesn't it? That your rate per second is. So your that, that, which is point zero one three cents. So you're saving one and a half seconds. But you know when you actually add up doing it five times a day or ten. So we can accurately measure how frequently you've done this. You can see your saving on each particular key that you can do. And as I said, I've only just mapped four in this particular schedule, just to demonstrate. And of course, I've done the sexy ones, which are going to do you a lot of time. And then you can see that over a year. So this is something that you can say, well, look, I'm being more productive. So increase, you know, pay me more money because I'm saving you money and you're getting far more profits on what you're doing because it's costing you half um, on part of your work. Uh, it, we're saving half the time. Well, on doing those sorts of things. So you've made a profit by me being faster, so give me money. So um, there is a way that you can measure this. Now, this is just recording all the time. Now, some people might be faster than others, but if they've all loaded up this program, this comes through. So what you can actually do with this at the end is that you can actually just go to that folder. You can save it as a backup copy, then clean it out completely. So you just delete all of these, uh, so all the way through there. Oh, oh, sorry, I'm not in the actual uh, thing there, am I? You can actually just delete all of those. So just take them and just go Dell, uh, all of them completely, and it'll just rewrite them all again. So all the ones that you're actually using, uh, it'll just uh, highlight. So then. So on this one here where I've been demonstrating the note ones, look how many times I've de used that. And this is actually only in a day. 67 times I've used that note one because it's really handy to use. The text one I've used 40 times. So a lot of the text ones I'm using a phenomenal amount of time. Some of the other ones I'm not using that that, that time. They're just sort of handy to do. Um, and uh, I was writing a lot of the symbol ones based on the old style of the symbols where you, you, you didn't actually have this option through here. Oh, oh, sorry, I've got to get right into the text field there, where you could actually come in here and use these symbols. So I was basing it on the, on the, the point where you had to hold down the Alt key and type 0216 or come into the, the char key in Windows to actually get the symbols because I'm working off that top and uh, uh, you can't do the Alt uh, 0216 because you don't have a number pad. Um, so that was quite frustrating. So uh, some of these solutions are maybe not as efficient now as what they initially were, but um, they're still speeding up. Now, I'm hoping for a lot of suggestions of other people doing uh, of, of things that people would like to see um, to, to actually improve this tool. So it's constantly being updated from its preliminary design. Uh, it, it's now in version three. Four is now on version five, so it's, uh, 0 0.05 is the current version. And uh, as as soon as I update it, I'll actually be advising people whoever download it and be able to do that. And you can actually just check um, if you just look on your trial license or your other ones, it tell you what version. Uh, is actually available at this point in time. I think 4 is actually available at this point in time, and I've just added some more symbols on that uh, I've got to actually just do some improvements to. Um, uh, so 
that's it is at the moment unfortunately i haven't been able to find a solution for you being able to remap these keys to something else and if i do they'll most probably be speed keys so that means you've got to have a key and a key modifier something like a control plus d rather than just a, 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 a two letter um, uh, or a two letter in the space or something at the end but I'm still working on that at this point in time. That is one of my priorities because obviously uh, my abbreviations are, are my abbreviations, but they are ones that I, I've tried to use. So I hope you find that of something of interest. I would be really keen for people to actually try this out. This is something which, you know, even if you don't use, and, and for the uninstall, um, if, you, if you don't like the program at the bottom through here, if you just look up uh, Power for Revit, it's got a little uninstall through there and you can get to the website through, the, um, uh, through that location as well. Um, when you're inside Revit, if you just type F2, it'll take you to the website um, to where it will show you uh, all of the different lists of things that you, you can actually do inside. So as I'm going through, I'll be updating these. When I update and do another version, that'll be there for people who've got the trial license and for the um, uh, 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 and, and and purchase a full license. Any updates that are actually occurring, you, you they'll be uh, coming across to you one way or another for you to to actually use. So um, uh, and again, if you find this thing awkward or it's interfering with something you do, if you just come down to the tray and just let left click, it just closes the program straight away. So very easy to get out of it if it's causing you a bit of a pain. And this pop-up box through here, there's a setting inside the INI file. It's not currently in this. This is actually part four, part five. It isn't here, but there is a, a switch that you can do so that the pop, if you want to actually uh, don't want to be disturbed by that, you can actually come through and it'll tell you your, your license um, uh, information through there rather than popping up every time you start the program. Because if I close that and start the program again, it just pops up, which can be a little bit irritating. Um, it's handy for me just to know when I've triggered it when I'm not because I'm, I'm testing things all the time. The uh, spreadsheet for um, uh, the ROI is for free. You can download that uh, at any time, uh, as I said. So there are two other things. There's three things there. If you want to consult um, regarding you would like to have an office uh, GUI such that, you know, something like this that you would want to have pre-set up that's specific for your company, uh, I can most probably do something there. Um, this is just a suggestion of things that I'm doing. I'm currently playing with them and, and I've yet to uh, uh, conclude as to which is the, the best way forward on them. Um, as I said, I'm still sort of struggling. I, I, I started off in Imperial. I was at one point in time, I had six projects on the go. <laughs> three of them were in Imperial, three of them were in Metric. And uh, that was a very long time ago uh, in London. And, uh, and and at that point in time, I could mentally switch between the two. But now I've been in, in Metric for so long. But I do appreciate that people who are working in uh, Imperial do find it frustrating. So like on this one here, it's putting the int symbol. So do we want the int symbol or, or the feet symbol or, you, you know, is the efficiencies enough that you, you can do it? But again, just grabbing the notes right the way through in the first plat day is, is maybe the way to go. Uh, so uh, I hope that's been of interest to you. I, I really encourage people to, to, to give it a try because um, it's, been a, it's been a real bugbear of mine um, of the distraction of coming up and looking through all of the tabs and the things like that. And and I find the out and coming through that, I don't, I don't find that works either. It's distracting as well. Um, and you could memorize some of those things with the out tab to get into the, the particular thing. But the out thing only works so far. So if I go out and if I go A and if I go for W for the wall, uh, the next point, I've got to come up with the mouse. So I've moved my mouse. This is the other thing. Um, I like to keep my mouse where I'm drawing. So where I'm doing walls and things like that, this is where I am at the moment. So a lot of my keyboard shortcuts is something like FF for a family so that I can go and grab something that I want. Um, uh, so uh, I, I don't have to move from the location of where I'm drawing. So it's just been, I never liked the ribbon in other programs, and it was something that I was stuck with for so long inside Revit. 
and 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 this is a way for me to get out of being able to do that by basically converting everything to keyboard shortcuts but being able to chain a whole lot of things together some of them as i said are very robust i'm very happy with the notes and the annotation ones which i find i'm using so much more and uh and, and uh i find them very useful and one of some of the ones that I actually want to refine. Some of the GUIs, I think the notes ones are, are quite good. I'd like to build some up for piping, for um, for ductwork, and also for some weld ones. A lot of symbols for the uh, structural. And I'd also, I'm not too sure whether electrical use that many symbols and stuff, but uh, maybe for something that I just used to just drop an old load of lights and put little wiggly lines between them. But um, this isn't BIM. This is just the day-to-day -day doing stuff now, although later on because a lot of the uh, 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 i actually don't think i have any many plugins here you because these ones here you, you you can actually come and link to whatever one they are um and, and so you can actually tie into some of the the add-ins as well so there might be shortcut keys that you're using inside add-ins and 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 so you can link into those as well uh, I haven't at this point in time, and uh, maybe I can look at them as being a, an, an add-in that people can add that they suddenly saying, you know, like one that one that I found really useful and I used to use quite a lot was Color Splasher for doing a lot of check-ins. I actually found that was fantastic for quality control. So I'd actually hook up a um, uh, uh, a link through to that, and actually because inside here you can actually. Uh, uh, add add a if, if, if you've got any add-ins you can actually have keyboard shortcuts to those ones as well um, that I found really handy to actually access some of the things that I wanted there was still a bit of fiddle that you can do but if it gets you halfway through you know get you three or four steps through with one keyboard command rather than actually having to do those four you're not as tired by the end of the day because you only actually had to remember one keyboard shortcut for those and again you know using things like the space bar um, means that you know you're not interfering with other keyboard shortcuts that you may actually have where you're using two letter ones um, that you, you know you, we can start using longer ones to actually assist with those so um, uh, I've uh, hope that um, this is something that may be useful for, for people um, uh, thank you for, for watching